Well, hello all you RX-7 lovers, in cartoon form that is. Today we have a very high-end cartoon deformation of the RX-7 FD3S with an RE Amemiya body kit on it. And this is made by YM Model and ERA-Q. I'm not sure the exact relationship. I have a suspicion, you know, ERA YM Model makes this model, but ERA-Q is like a binding company that approaches many model companies to make cute, cute versions of their real models. Because why a model actually has a realistic version of this RX-7. Okay. Let's get this thing open. So even though this is a goofy looking car, it has all the details of a, re of a resin model that you would expect from YM model. So I'm doing a little Wikipedia research here. The body kit company RE Amemiya was founded by Isami Amemiya in 1974 and they basically they tuned rotary engined RX-7s and that's how they made a name for themselves. They even won a, drift, a D1 drift championship with an RX-7. So they have some racing credentials and uh, they are still in business. And their website looks like it was made in 1980, the 1980s, but they have a lot of different products for different uh, cars. Oh, there's tape, yeah, all right. So now without that tape, Eh, it's not a super loose cover, but it's probably not a good idea to lift it by the cover. I do not have a, a realistic version of this car because, frankly, I don't find it to be attractive. But with a tuned version, it doesn't really bother me so much. Alright, that one's got some multi-spoke wheels. This one's got some six spokes, but the actual model we're looking at today seems to have like double six spokes. Alright. This is way too fragile. I'm not going to remove it from the base. Let's see what this nameplate looks like. So YM model seems to be limited to 500 pieces and then the uh, Eric Q and then the Arc 7 and then the body kit uh, branding as well. This uh base looks like carbon fiber but I don't know if it is hold on here like there's there's thickness right there but I, I'm gonna guess it's a sticker of carbon fiber or is it it's hard to say you know it's such an expensive model that maybe this is carbon fiber but Maybe it's not. I can't say for sure. It's... I'm going to guess it's a sticker. Okay, let's start on this side of the car. So the black wheels are, you know, not my, my favorite, but they do show off the brakes quite nicely. I'm going to zoom in here. So the brakes are silver and they have uh, slots in them. So that's nice. But is there a caliper? I feel like the rear wheel has the caliper towards the back of the car. Like right there is the caliper. The front though, I think the caliper is towards the door. Right there. And then you can see the tires, they're not slab sided. They actually have curvature to them, so that's nice. And you can see the carbon decal here on the side. It's got some rivet printing on there. And that is you know, there's some molding that's trying to form around. So it's just a raw decal, it's not clear coated or anything. This I'm assuming is a decal as well, the R E Amemiya. And then we have some molded in bumps for the uh, body screws. The fuel filler thing looks nice. Alright, panel gap looks good. Separate mirrors look good and they have reflective stickers in them. Go into the front. Yeah, decal again. And then actually there's a decal on top of the decal. That's kind of weird. 
I guess it's easier to apply instead of trying to align this whole carbon thing properly. They'd probably just put the carbon on any which way. Well, maybe not because it does have a pattern to it. But I do like that the carbon decal is going into these vents very well. So that's nicely done. It's not easy to do, by the way. Alright. Yeah, so all these... This decal work is good. It's actually going into the vents. So the lens cover is very nice, very thin. Yeah, you can see two silver headlights. And I think those headlights are separate pieces because they have thickness to them. So those are put onto a black backing of the light bucket. The bottom of the light bucket there is yellow. Maybe that should have been painted black. And then even these little, I'm going to guess, turn signals have a little lens over them as well. So there's one light there, possibly two, because I kind of feel like there's a circle up there as well. This vent here is, is it shallow? No, it's actually kind of deep. But it's black in there. Same with this. That one's bottoming out right there. That one's quite deep. So dark. I'm going to put a flashlight there. Maybe there's a grill or something. Nope. It's just uh, darkness. But the brake ducts actually do have a grill. So that's nice. Without a flashlight, you would never know that. They could be separate pieces because the separation of the black is so good from the yellow. And then, yes, yeah, so you can see in the turn signal area, there actually are two silver dots there as well. So a lot of pieces just to make those headlights and turn signals. Very impressive. There's a Motul thing here, and I think it's on the back side because I don't feel anything here other than smooth plastic. This is that super thin sheet plastic, like packaging plastic. And I think we have some photo etch metal wiper blades, as one would expect from a resin model. And they're actually bent 90 degrees and perpendicular to the windscreen. Those are really nice wiper blades. Maybe the best I've seen so far. Like, because they have this little dog leg, like real wiper blades sometimes have. So that's really good. It's definitely one of the better wiper blades I've seen. Alright, uh, this side of the car. Yeah, the decal, we have some more silver up on here for the rivets or screws, whatever they're using. There's some molded in bumps as well underneath the decal. So good application, as good as one could get that thing to be. And that decal is present again in the back. Oh, alright, look at the side window. So it's that thin plastic, there's a blackout on the back side. But on the front side, there's a photo etched piece of metal here for the hand grab and... Is that a door lock, maybe? That hole? Probably. This is very thin defrostalized. You know, that's okay because you can still see the interior, the shifter right there. So those lines don't bother me so much. Taillights look really good. Translucent red, as you can see the light getting through there. Three molded in bumps. Hmm. Yeah, this is a hard one. I'm not sure. You know, the real car, this is all like blacked out plastic. And then the lights light up when they light up. But here they just left it all red. But it's dark here, so maybe that's a good choice. You know, it looks kind of black, but then as you move it around, the light gets in there. You do realize it's a clear piece of plastic. Seems to be the same red down here for these backup lights. And I don't know, maybe these are just reflectors. But the backup lights are nice, you know, you can actually see them in the red. What's kind of sad, though, is there's no license plate. You know, even just like an RE MME a license plate would have been cool. Or something that just says RX-7 even. That would have been nice. It's just weird to have blank, blankness there. The Mazda badge. I'm, I'm zoomed in four times here. Yeah, could have been... It's a little crooked. I, I can't tell if this is a decal or a tampo. I don't want to pick it at too much, but maybe it's a decal. Not sure, but... Alright. So now we have some black exhaust tips. Mm. Alright. 
can barely see the exhaust in that other rear photo. Or is it just one exhaust tip? You know what? It'd probably be easier if I just got the flashlight. Alright, so it's just one exhaust tip. And actually that is similar to the real photograph. I kind of wish that it still even had some silver on the exhaust tip. Even if it would make it less realistic. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. But it's nice. It's very round. It's very thin. This diffuser literally goes underneath the car. And then there's air behind it. I'm not sure if you can see that. Here was one lumen. Or maybe if I put the light behind it. Yeah, you see how you can see the tire? I think through that opening on the bottom of the car. So that's really neat. And while we're at it, the tires do have, you know, nice treads and all that stuff. All right, the rear wing, you can clearly see they're using photo etched metal for the wing struts because they're so thin. There, I guess my hand. Look how thin those bars are, right? So that's definitely a piece of metal. And then the wing itself is quite dimensional. You know, it's not a flat wing. There's sculpturing to it, and it's covered in a decal, so that's good. And on the side of the wing, the end place, it says Super G. I don't know what Super G is. And there's two little dots for the screws, representing the screws. Alright, so now the hard part is trying to get, <laughs> trying to see into a shortened interior. I'm not sure if we're going to pull this off or not, but I'm zoomed in four times. I hit focus on the window, turn the light on, turn it down to one lumen, let's see what happens. One nice thing is it's a tall window, so the light's actually getting in there. But let me jump to 15 lumens. That's better. Alright, so the dash does have good molded details. The center console is actually facing towards the driver. Um, there's an e-brake. I can see like an e-brake there. Right here. I'm trying to twist this, see if there's any harnesses. No seat harnesses, sadly, but um, it looks like there are holes, you know, for harnesses to go through. So, yeah, there's a tack or a speedo, some sort of gauges in that pinnacle. Let me lift it up. So, again, that's what you would expect from any model made by YM model. But the crazy thing is this interior is like half or half the sh length of a regular interior. So it must be really hard to try to put something like this together. Very nice. I think in, there's actually a, a, like a little antenna stub right there. There's some sort of bump right there, but no paint. And it's only on that side of the car, so that's a nice detail I missed earlier. All right, well, yeah, I'm quite impressed as usual from YM Model. I, I really haven't been let down by this brand to my, not in a major way at least, which is uh, pretty rare. I usually complain a lot in my videos when they become expensive models. I expect more. As I think I should, since I'm paying more. Alright. So I have a whole bunch of RX-7s in Choro Q form. This is a Initial D uh, RX-7. I 3D printed my own wheels on it. And then I'm using some 
poster board putty to mount it. So that's why it's steering. That one just has totally blacked out taillights. Although they're, it's still a smoked piece of plastic. The uh, first ARC-7, this one uh, from Cherokee has pop-up headlights. Definitely a toy gimmick, but uh, it's a toy. Right. And again, putty. I can't remember if these are the wheels it came with. I didn't 3D print these. They may have come with these wheels. I'll look at the other non-FD out of the way. There's a Mazda 252i by Choro Q. And this one I did 3D print my own wheels because I find that to be a really unique RX-7. Alright, I got three more FDs to come up here. We have a police, uh, no, it's not police, it says safety car on the side. And this has some BNDS plastic wheels and then some 3D printed brakes that I made up. One of my very first Choro cues is this guy. It just says Mazda printed on it, and then this has some alloy wheels that are meant for Hot Wheels. They're just those generic alloys you can buy off AliExpress or eBay. And the last one is a Itasha car. So it's got cartoons all over it. It's a thing apparently in Japan. Or maybe everywhere, I don't know. Not my kind of thing. Alright, so there we go. A whole bunch of RX-7s. Well, I gotta say, it's a really nice model. I mean, the all the lights are great. I mean, these lights contain multiple pieces. Uh, the thin lenses over them, the mirrors. Uh, the only, I guess, nitpick is I don't like the wheel color. If the wheels were bronze or something, they'd be a little easier to see. I'm sure they're really nicely detailed wheels, but I, I can't really tell because they're gloss black. So, but I guess this car very often comes with black wheels from the images I was looking at on the internet. So, I guess it's the proper choice. Just not my choice, I guess. Alright, well anyways, as a... Uh, you know, this Eric Q gets companies to make these super deformed cars for them. I'm going to continue buying them. Uh, it's, yeah, it's great. I like it. So thank you for watching today. I'll see you in the next uh, super deformed resin review. Bye.